Hello and welcome back to another one of my videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be uh, making leather leather balm, uh, mainly waterproof uh, to waterproof uh, my new my new hiking boots. Um, these ones are the Hi-X cold wet weather hiking boots. Um, they're Gore-Tex lined and you know got a lot of padding, so they're mainly for winter, um, autumn, spring, winter sort of use. And um, these I got from Surplus Army Surplus. Um, so they issued, they were issued to, um, I think they might still be, I'm not sure, um, issued to the MOD. And yeah, these are very good, very good boots made by Hi-X, Hi I can't pronounce it, it's a German company anyway. And it's very, very good, they're very heavy though. Um, yeah, so what we'll be doing is um, waterproofing these. And yeah. So what we'll be doing is um, using a few ingredients. Very, very simple. Very simple. Um, we're going to be using wax. Um, wax. Uh, this is my crystalline wax. I got it for another project, which um, I can talk about in a, in a sec. Uh, my crystalline wax. And then we'll be using some sort of uh, lard. I wanted to use lard, but I found this in the fridge. And I figured, you know what, I'm going to use this because I think lard won't go rancid. Um, so this is coconut oil. Uh, I mean, cold, in cold weather, it is, um, it is grease like solid. It doesn't turn to a solid, but today it's like 30 degrees and inside the garage, inside the, the workshop, and it's so hot. You know, it's 35 outside and in here it's like a sweat box. But, um, yeah, that's slowly turned into liquid. Uh, it'll make it easier to measure out. And some some oil. We won't be using a lot of this oil. This is vape seed oil. Um, we'll be using a small amount of that, and that will help sort of condition the leather a little bit. Um, I've not been able to find what is best for oil. Um, what is best? For, what oil is best for leathers? <clears throat> Take two. Right. <laughs> I've um. I've not. I've done I've done a bit of research, um, about half an hour of research on the internet on Google, and what I found is I can't find a good oil. Some people say neat for oil to use. Some people are using saying baby oil. Some people are saying using olive oil. Um, you name it. Some people are saying it. Whereas some other people are saying don't use that because of this. Don't use that because of this. And then I've found I've found a lot of the time is it'll be companies saying that don't use this don't use that but use our product because we've got a ancient secret recipe um secret recipe um that we that we're we're using our product and um it's best so you know i'm not i'm not going to believe any of that um so anyway yeah so what we're going to be doing is making some sort of a like a dubbing a natural um I don't know, I think dubbing is natural anyway. But um, yeah, like a, some sort of a dubbing using, I'm not sure if this is natural, but using natural ingredients. Right. Um, what else, what else? Yeah, um, a lot of people like to use, <clears throat> I've noticed a lot of people are using trainers nowadays. But because I'm going out into, um, I want to sort of, in a few months' time, sort of go out into Dartmoor, I wanted to use um, some boots. Um, actual boots um, because Dartmoor I've been there before like years and years ago and it gets very boggy and very wet um, so we'll be using these in combination with a pair of trousers and waterproofing using another another recipe um, the, that video will be coming up after this video because there's a long cure time on those um, on these trousers so um, what I'll do, I'll edit in a, um, a section of those trousers sort of hanging up and curing. I think I'll put in the after one week of curing time. I'll just edit that in. And yeah, so I'll be using them in combination of these. So I should be fully waterproof from the waist down um, with these methods, sort of old traditional methods. And with a raincoat or a poncho on top of a raincoat or whatever, you know, depending on how the weather is. I should be fully waterproof, well, at least very water resist resistant. I mean, nothing's fully waterproof. Even a submarine isn't fully waterproof. 
you know, if it goes down to the bottom of the ocean, it will definitely let water in. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so we've got these ingredients. And we've got something for measuring them out in, just a empty can. Empty can, um, some ancient scales I can use for weighing out the proportions. It's going to be... I need to quickly look it up again what, what I'm going to be going for. I um, did decide, but I need to double check with you what proportions I'm going for. And some empty tins. Um, you can can use any tins. I've got this one. I'll use that one last if I actually pay too much. Um, I've got this little lip balm tin here. You know, I'll use that because this could probably be used as a lip balm as well. So I'll keep that as a lip balm. And some empty air rifle pellet tins. A couple here, two different sizes. Um, so yeah, yeah. I think that's it. Oh yeah, and um, let's turn you over here. What are we doing? Don't need that anymore. What we're doing is warm this all up on the hot plate. Warm this all up on the hot plate in a in a clean clean um, can. Oh, sorry, I'm still in a clean can, and they'll obviously help the wax and the grease and all that sort of come together so uh yes yeah, let's, let's get on with it all right so i'm um, sorry you can't see the scale the region on the scale but what i want to do i want to make a like a couple of hundred grams off this um of this i think 200 grams should be enough i have a little bit left over i can always sort of run around and find something to pour it into i mean i've got you know, I've got these sort of empty fish tins I can use and I don't know, figure out a way of putting a lid, a lid on it or, a lid on it or something. So, um, yeah, what I'll do, I'll, I'll just measure off um, 100 grams of the wax. I'm doing it straight into the, straight into the, into the thingy, thingy thing. Into the melting, there should be enough here now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pour in, pour in uh, 100 grams of this one. Right. That could be, I need something. I won't worry too much if this isn't perfectly measured out. Just um All right, so there's a hundred of that. Right. And put in a hundred grams of the wax. I'll put in the oil. I don't want to put much oil in, so I might put in maybe 25 grams of the oil. So let's put this back in its box and let's see if I can measure it out. I mean, ideally, you want to you want to use digital scales. Yeah, there you go. Right. One that got away. Right, that's it. Let's move us over to the hot plate. Slow zoom. Sorry, I need to get a new tripod. God, this camera's getting warm. I really hope it doesn't cut out. I think the temperature on this, I'm out, you know what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this off now and pop it in the fridge because this is showing a little warning on the screen that the camera's getting too hot. 
So what I'm gonna do, I can feel it, it's, it's roasting away. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this off now and pop it in the fridge for a bit. You know what? You know what? Let's have that on. That's a little bit better. So I forgot to add this light. Um, I need some better lighting in here. I'm really sorry guys about the lighting situation. I need to get on it. I've got that lovely mixing bowl I can turn into a lampshade. Right, anyway, so um, whilst, whilst I'm sort of talking to people and hunting around in, on the internet, I couldn't actually find what the weights are of these boots. I mean, obviously they're all going to be different for different sizes, all the way from the women's four up to the men's uh, wide, uh, I don't know, whatever, 15s. Um, these are these are normal, normal, no medium, medium eight. These are medium eights. Same same for these work boots. So what I'll do, I'm gonna do a little comparison, and um, we'll see the weights. But oh yeah, I forgot to mention these these high hex boots. Just um, check on that. Yeah, they're still melting. Uh, what I've done, I've turned this up to number three because it's sort of um, plateaued a little bit and it's melting. Um, so we talk about these boots a little bit anyway. Um, these boots come in women women sizes as well as men sizes and also widths so the men's widths obviously will be wider um, this is a medium width so that'll be a men, men's medium eight you can get a men's wide eight and obviously all the other sizes but this is just a regular medium um, also this here is a steel toe cap safety boot um, they almost feel identical. I mean, there's a lot more leather here. You can see, I don't know, is it shot? What are you shot? Yeah, barely. Gosh, you can't really see much going on. Let's have this, let's hide it on. Is it better? Yeah. You can see, um, there's a lot, lot more to it here. I mean, these are also water, water resistant, sort of up to about there-ish. I mean, but they don't have Gore-Tex or anything. They are, they are, they have got a bit of padding and they do have leather on both inside and outside and a little bit of padding in between so they're warmish um, and I've heard that some people do take steel toe cap boots um, hiking which I couldn't imagine that will get so uncomfortable around the toe area um, a lot of rub in there um, but anyway so yeah what we're going to do we're just going to weigh them and see the difference between a safety boot a work boot and a my new hiking boots, the Hayex, Hayex Cold Rock Rubber Boot. Also, another reason why I bought these out is because once I've made this um, this recipe up, I'm going to test them out on these old work boots. I mean, they're not old, old, but you know, they're getting along a bit. Their leather's dried out a bit, and um, I don't want to. I don't want to. I just want to try them out on this first. I don't want to end up making my making my new boots all soggy or something and making it go weird. So these these can be expensive. If you used to buy the equivalent of these, equivalent from Blacks or Millets or I don't know Trespass or whatever, you're looking at like 200, 250 pound pair of boots. And I, I got these cheap because I'm an eBay ninja. I managed to get these pretty cheap, but these these are sort of 70 pounds, 80 pounds upwards for for super grade or brand new. So and they're quite hard to come by anyway because I think they've been in service for a few years and I think they're phasing them out. So to find them in this condition is quite, quite, quite good. Um, if you are after a pair of these, expect to pay anywhere from £50 up to £70, £80. You know, and in this condition, there's a few Ebays out there that are selling really bad condition boots. I mean... You know, these, this tread you can see is like brand new, still even got the powder on it. And, um, you know, these have never been worn outside. There's some, some sellers out there where the grip is totally worn away. All this rubber along here is sort of all split in along where, where it sort of folds. Um, scratches, you know, big, all really worn out scratches all over, dents and scratches. They're trying to get like 50, 60 pounds for them. So if you can find a new new pair for 50, 50, 60 pound, I'll definitely go for it. Um, that would be a bargain. But okay, um, 
so enough waffling, what we do, we'll um, start weighing these up and see what we got. We'll do them from the same spot, balance them up from the same spot, from the heel and just off the heel and everything. Right, okay, what we got here? So we have a smidge over 900 grams and um, Okay, 925. We'll, we'll weigh both of them. Well, that's very weird because now this one is just under at 900, 900 grams. So this, this one here weighs 25 grams more than this one. Damn it. Now, now that I've weighed them, I can feel the weight difference. Don't know what that's all about. Right, so we got these ones. Okay, these ones, 950. Yeah, 950. Um, did I mention these are the buckle, buck, buckler boots? Buckler boots, very good boots. Um, they'll probably set you back about 70, 80 pound. Um, very comfortable. Um, obviously, still toe cap, so they're just good for working with heavy things and yep. yeah so we've got about 950 grams for these two 950 grams so they're, they're very close these ones the still toe cap boots are are slightly heavier by um, 25 grams or so so um, yeah obviously you couldn't wear these for work because these are these are non steel toe capped now yeah, I think they might have some sort of a reinforcing piece in there like a piece of um, like a piece of nylon or something whatever um, cap just to, for it to keep, help keep it shape um, so it doesn't all sort of flat out and start hitting your toes but obviously these ones are still toe capped and um, yeah so yeah what I'll do is I'll keep these here for now keep, put these ones aside, put the hags aside and keep these because I want to test out this recipe on these first and then see how see how it all goes because I don't want to ruin these boots first uh, if I want to ruin any boots I want to ruin these ones um, so yeah all right, um, so just out of interest, uh, weigh, weigh a pair of sort of modern uh, trail running shoes, which I've noticed a lot of people um, are using these days. Uh, these, these ones are quite worn, so I've been using them for almost a year for, um, I took up uh, running, taken up running, and I'll take, uh, wear these over to the park. But, um, just out of interest, let's see how much um, a pair of um, trail runners weigh. These are the Adidas uh, Turex, T Tyrex, you know, whatever. Um, they're also Gore-Tex, Gore-Tex lined, really good, um, pretty waterproof, um, up to about there. <laughs> right. right, so we've got 300, 300 grams compared to a almost one kilogram boot. Yeah, 300 grams. Um, the, these are great, great, great shoes. They're not the lightest because they are Gore-Tex lined. Um, I, I do believe the Gore-Tex has add quite a bit to it. Um, I don't have a regular pair of trainers on hand at the moment and I can't be bothered. But anyway, um, yeah, you can just weigh your own trainers. But I've had these trail runners, about 300 grams. Well, well not about. Yeah, 300 grams if this scale is accurate at all. Yeah, so there we go. Alright, so I've just pulled this out of the fridge to um, help it cool down. Um, I was going to mention, but the camera started overheating. Uh, it's probably like 40 degrees in the workshop at the moment. And um, I cranked it up a little bit. It's at number two and a half. So I crank it up a little bit more to three and a half. Um, because it is hot, but it's sort of sort of um, slow down and melting a bit oh yeah, here we go no, maybe I should turn it down 
It's just a sort of film on top. Uh, right, so I want to mention this. I mentioned it in the other video when I was doing the waterproofing of the trousers, but this video is more than likely going to come out before. Um, treat this like your um, heating cooking oil on the stove when you're frying chips or whatever. Um, you don't want to heat it up quick, you don't want to overheat it. There's, once this reaches its flash point, it will, it could burst into flames, especially if you're using like a gas hob or something, um, a sort of flame, open flame. So, hence why I'm using, hence why I'm using the electric um, hob, the electric stove. So, you know, don't be that guy. Don't use a blowtorch. Don't, um, you know, basically no open flames, no gas hob, no blowtorches. Just you know, try try your best to minimise um, making a making it to the A and E. Um, you know, um, injuring yourself. Um, also, I've got this here. I've got this tin. Oh, I've got a pair of leather gloves here for handling in case I do need to deal with it in any way. I've got these gloves here, so I'm not going to burn myself badly. Um, it's, the heat still will transfer through these. Um, ideally, you want welding gauntlets. If um, when you want to sort of pick these, pick these things up and pour them and do all that, but for me this will do. Um, I've got this tin here, so in case it does start to burst into flames, I can calmly, no panicking, no trying to throw it on there because that will just make things so much more worse. Calmly slip on a slip on a glove, whatever glove, slip it on, calmly. Just place it over, done, and it will snuff it out. It will starve the fire of oxygen. Um, you see, in the kitchen, people are using like a damp, a damp um, flannel, a, ta a damp sort of, you know, that's that's good. But you're gonna have to have a bucket of water here with flannel. Then you have to wring it out, and then throw it over. I think it will be easier just to, just to drop a can over, a larger can over, just to um, snuff it out, to. Um, yeah, put out the flame. So yeah, that's my little safety rant over. And whatever you do, can't see him. Don't be a Ian and wear shorts and flip flops. Because if this ends up spilling down yourself, um, it'll be a trip to the A and E. So. Right, so we are almost there. I've turned the temperature up to four and a half for the last little bit. Um, as I notice, it's still a bit cloudy. I noticed the more I turned the temperature up, the less the cloudiness went away. So I'm going to turn it up for the last bit, just slowly increase it, increase it, until the cloudiness, cloudiness um, sort of goes away. Um, this is going to be a neutral sort of dubbing, a neutral um, leather balm. So you could, at this point, you could add colour in. So if you had like a black pair of boots, you could add um, charcoal or... Maybe some toner, um, printer toner, black printer toner, or if um, uh, yeah, brown for brown boots, you could add um, some sort of oxide, like a brown oxide, iron oxide. So yeah, all right. let's give it one last little mix. Oh yeah, that looks good. It smells amazing as well, because of the coconut oil. The coconut oil has really, um, has really brought these um, flavours together. All right, so very gently, very gently. this one out. I can see bits of lead down at the bottom and some are floating up. Got quite a lot here. I'm gonna do this. Ideally you want, you want something with a with a pouring spout on it. And the rest will just go in here. 
tiny, tiny bit. Perfect. Right, folks, so not the boots. I'm going to use this one. I think I should have used more. This is really hard. I should have used more um, coconut grease. Uh, what I might do is tip these all back out into there and um, give it a go. What am I doing? I'm going to give it a go quickly now, see how it goes. But I'm thinking add more coconut grease. Um, these, these will come out easily, you know, they, um, they're not stuck in there. Yeah, I'll give it a go anyway and see. Right, try and find the cleanest cloth you can. Try and find the cleanest spot you can. Yeah, it comes off. Yeah, it goes on all right. Yeah, it seems to be all right, but it's very warm today, so it is going to be like this. But I mean, during winter times, this ain't going to um, be so good. Oh, well, I should really remove these laces as well. Should I? Should I bother? No, I won't bother. <clears throat> it's just um, an experimentation. Where's my corner? What corner was I using? Okay, dang it. I've lost my corner. There's this one. Yeah, it doesn't seem too bad. Yeah, what I might do is I'll, I'll use it like this. With, um, it's very warm these days. Let me see, it has really darkened up the leather as well. This isn't, um, I don't know what you call it. It's sort of leather, I don't know, it's weird. It's kind of like, not not suede, but it's, it's um, it's got a it's got a texture to it, but it's not suede, if that makes sense. It's um, it's hard to explain. Try to make sure I get it all into the grooves. Oh yeah, by the way, I did wash these boots um a while back. No, I do try and keep my boots clean, and um, I've washed them. You know, since since. I've last used them. You always want to sort of wash your boots, especially um, around the crack or around the seams and everything, because if there's like a lump of uh, mud in there, obviously the wax isn't going to protect through the mud, is it? Yeah. See, it's darkened up a bit. It's giving it a bit of a shine. It feels nice. It feels like it will definitely be waterproof. Yeah, I'm knocking that. Yeah, so what I'll do, I'll carry on with this. Um, and what I'll do, once I finish doing these boots, I'm gonna melt all this down and mix in a bit more, mix in a bit more of the um, grease, the coconut grease, just to try and soften it a bit more. But yeah. Okay, so I'm not really sure how well the camera's picking this up, but that's the one I've just waxed. Uh, and yeah, it definitely feels like that's going to be waterproof. Um, yeah, I, I removed the laces, did a proper job, all sort of under there, all, did all the tongue. Um, yeah, what I'll do, I'll leave this for a bit, let it sink in. But um, this isn't too bad in this temperature, but it's really hot today, so I, I don't want to ruin it by adding too much, wa um, too much um, coconut grease. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly go in for another melt and pour and just add a touch more of the coconut grease. So I kind of wish I didn't put the coconut grease back in the fridge. But um, yeah, what I'll do, I'll just gather up all the 
all the waxes again and um, yeah I'll do that yeah I'll get back to you right so I've just added um, 50 grams more coconut oil hopefully this isn't too much otherwise I'll have to start adding starting to add uh, more wax which will be annoying then it will just be a bit of a cat and mouse game won't it I'll be adding too much of that then I have to add some more of that but um oh, what happened anyway I'm gonna leave this on heat for a bit and uh, make sure it's fully fully melted and fully fully mixed and yeah what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do another pour but I'm only going to pour into one tin, let that cool down, and try that. Then when, when I know I'm happy, when I know I'm happy with this, this um, new mix, I'll I'll go ahead and pour the other the other ones. I might need to find another tin. Well, no, I definitely will need to find another tin because yeah. Now I've sort of gone over my guesstimation by fifty grams. Um, did I mention I added a little bubble? I added um, an extra 50 grams of coconut grease. Yep, so I better maybe put this phone on charge. Phone, this camera on charge before the battery dies. I think the battery might actually be on its way out, and me putting it in the fridge finished it off. Right, I'll get back to you anyway. close. That's very close to the top. Wow, that is at the top. Right, I'm gonna let that set. Yeah, I can't touch this now, that will spill over. Well, I wish I had like a little scoop I could just take out a tiny bit. Uh, oh well, leave it. Right, yep, let that, it will shrink a bit actually as it cools, so it'll be alright. And plus I do have a lot extra, so it'll be in my best interest to fill all of these right to the top. Anyway, yep, I'll get back to you once it's set, and we'll see where, how that goes. Right, so, what's the time? It's half nine. How long have I been going? Since, um, maybe... 11 o'clock-ish, lunchtime-ish, um, so this has cooled down a bit now, it's um, a tiny bit warm, but yeah, I can feel it already, it just feels so much better. I know it's uh, really warm today, so obviously as temperature, as, as the temperature drops, this is going to obviously harden, you know, it be more difficult to use, so yeah, what I want to do is... Um, try it out on the on the other boots um, I like the way it's gone on onto the bucklers so yeah let's zoom out again oh my god so slow I wish there's a way of making this fast right okay okay right okay so we've got the bucklers here uh, more light more light oh turning on so many lights I tend to forget one or two right so there's the bucklers I don't know if you can remember how it looked before but it's brought the it's brought the all the color even it was very blotchy it has darkened it a lot but it's brought the color all together and yeah it's, it feels waxy it does feel waxy but you know um, keep this in a cool place and that will the wax in this will sort of go away a bit and um, yeah so what I'm going to do now is use the, the sort of mark 2 on the on the hay axe and see how that goes take the laces out oh yeah I forgot to mention these have the speed lacing the speed lacing hoops loops or whatever you want to call them um, and also it has this locking, it's really cool, this sort of locking, locking eyelet 
and um, but anyway. Is that really come away? Yeah. Maybe, possibly. Oh no, whatever. Um, I do it. Right. Yeah. So it's got these these open quick quick eyelets, and I think the reason why these boots are being phased out now by the MOD because they don't these are not NATO approved they need to be basically like this um, closed eyelets so they can't sort of slip out and um, kind of makes sense when like these these, these are combat boots that uh, you know they look like hiking boots and but they're, they're designed as combat boots you know um, these are for real serious extreme conditions and you don't want one of your laces popping out or something. So that could be, um, you know, that could be quite annoying. So yeah, that's that's why I reckon these are these are being phased out. Right. Um, same same with the bucklers. These are clean. I mean, they, they never needed cleaning. You know, these are literally as as I got them. Um, it's a bit dusty, but. You know, you can see the see the tongue. Yeah, a bit dusty. Yeah, you can see the the tongue stitched all the way up to um sort of there. So it's gonna be these are gonna be waterproof all the way up, up to um sort of midway, midway between these eyelets. Don't know why it looks so dark on camera. On the, on the viewfinder, it looks so dark. Hopefully, this is all sort of coming out. All right, so what we'll do is um, get that, get that extremely the cleanest um, towel I have in the workshop, and um, find a clean corner. I won't use the other corner because that's sort of contaminated with the other, the other um, first Mark Mark II um, recipe of um, wax. It smells nice though. Oh, I smell that all day. Right, find a new clean corner and um, start again. Oh yeah, that feels better. Right, so what I'm doing, just moving a little bit round on my finger. Yeah, I love the way that comes out. It's a lot better. What I do, I'll turn the temperature back on on this, so I can remelt it for when I pour it later. I won't show you the pouring of the other ones. But I do want to get it up to temperature and um, make sure I can pour it without it getting too late. Right, where's my wax? Yeah. See, a bit, a bit of the brown colouring is coming off. Right, so I want to make sure I get in all the little crease, crease areas. Helicopter. The police have been flying around, flying around for the past few days. I um, don't know what they're doing, who they're looking for, but they're just flying around. And they'll go away in like, I don't know, an hour or so, but then they'll come back at 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, God knows what's going on, God knows what they're doing. It's super annoying. Uh, yeah. I don't know if the camera's even picking it up. Yeah, it's going on nicely. Yeah, um, I don't need to do this bit. All from basically from here down is is rubber. Um, so I don't need to worry about any of this. So I'll just sort of carry on from this line upwards. And I'll work my way around, make sure I don't sort of miss any parts out. But I like the way this um, this wax goes now, and it has sort of dulled the dulled the boot. It's taken off all that polish as well. So I think the, whoever this is issued to um, put some polish on it uh, before he decided he hated him or um, whatever. So yeah, the polish is actually coming off with this. Look at that. So I'm getting a bit of polish smeared around here right now. 
don't know what colour polish this is. This could have been some sort of a liquid polish. Um, it kind of looks almost like it's dripped on in places. Unless um, the previous owner sort of melted, melted it. Melted it and sort of um, got it on there. Yeah, what I do, um, so I'll, I'll get this all on, I won't show you the whole lot. Um, obviously, I'm going to sort of get it all right, all in there, all in this area, get right in there, get over the whole, everything basically, get everything, and then I'll get back to you uh, once I've done them. And then what I'll do, I'll let them sit for a bit, and then I'll show you, just sort of giving them a quick buff over, just to remove any excess. Right, so this is the first first recipe. Um, that was 100 grams of the microcrystalline wax and 100 grams of coconut coconut oil, um, coconut um, grease. I don't know what you want to call it. And um, what was it 25 grams of the cooking oil? The Vape seed oil, I want to say vape seed oil, yeah, whatever that oil. And even though it has applied, but I just want to say today is so hot. Let's do a shot, aren't we? Um, it's so hot today, it's like 35 outside degrees centigrade. In here, it's, it's sort of almost 10 o'clock, and I'm still sweating. You know, um, my vape has a one or two on it. Yeah, 29, 30 degrees. 30 degrees in here. Um, so, yeah, so that that's why it managed to apply, but it's uh, as usually in England, that's sort of like a freak occurrence. occurrence. Um, we might have that one or two times a year, maybe a week out of the year. The rest of the time is average. Um, sort of 20s whatever um i don't know whatever you can check the weathers um or if you're, if you're from england and watching this video you know exactly what i'm talking about and um yeah so that's why it it was that being able to apply um in in any other sort of temperatures that would have been impossible to apply i would have had to really sort of work it around get it hot on the on the end of a cloth just to apply it but um i did it anyway um, it's come out nice. It's a little, bit, it feels a bit waxy. It does feel a bit sort of tacky, but I put that down to the temperature, and um, yeah. So I've just just finished um, doing these ones, um, and yeah, yeah, feel feel a little bit tacky, a bit waxy, but that is what's going to keep the water out. Um, I'm obviously going to do it again before I head out. Um, give them one more, one more thing before I head out, and maybe even I'll be taking my lip balm with me. So if I need to sort of touch up any little areas, I feel it's sort of getting a bit soggy. Um, I could do that, like right down into the into the corners where water might sit and mud and water and whatever. Um, but like I said, I will be going over these again. Um, yeah. So there it is. Uh, Thank you for making it out all the way to the end and I hope this has been informative and remember guys safety first and watch out for my next video um, to do with the trousers, waterproofing the trousers. Um, it'll be sometime next week in a week's time, maybe a fortnight. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you soon.